Hey, how's it going? Today I am talking about why it doesn't matter what shoe you wear to prevent injury and make it so that you can run without pain. This is Running to the Castle, a podcast for injury prone run Disney runners on a journey to running magical miles. Join me, Dr. Allie, as I share the secrets I've gathered as a runner, doctor of physical therapy, and coach. You'll learn the exact ways I get my clients to the castle strong without feeling broken or held together with KT tape as they cross the finish line. So I did an episode. I'm not sure what episode number it was. I will link it in the show notes. I did an episode talking about what shoe should you wear to prevent injury? And go ahead and listen to that episode. It's, a, of course, I'm biased. It's a great episode to listen to on the on my opinion on what shoe you should use spoiler alert the shoe doesn't necessarily matter but go ahead and listen because there are some points on what actually does matter and how to help help you decide what shoe you should be wearing but today I am talking about why that doesn't really matter and what or not why it doesn't matter but what actually is causing somebody's pain when they switch shoes and how to avoid that pain so that they can run without the pain or injury. So in particular, I, at the time of recording this, I saw on a Facebook group that somebody says, this is my longest run to date. However, this morning I'm having some knee pain. I just recently purchased a new pair of shoes and they were comfortable for about four miles and then started getting arch and knee pain. So I made a pit stop at home to change into my old shoes and finished out the rest of my run. To add, I wore the old shoes for a nine and a half mile run last week. No pain at all during or after. This particular person ran a half marathon on this day, 13.1 miles. So whenever I get a DM about this type of thing, or I see it in the Facebook groups, or I talk about it with my clients, my first question is always, how far did you run in those shoes? And then they give their answer, and their answer is always, no matter what mileage it was, or how much time it was, it was always too much. So it's not the fact that you have new shoes and you're wearing new shoes. It's that you wore them too long. So typically when breaking in a pair of shoes and listen to the other uh, podcast episode that I alluded to earlier, the one that's going to be linked in the show notes, when you break in a pair of shoes, what you're doing is you're loosening up the lasts and the covering at your toes. Basically, I compare it to taking a pair of jeans out of the dryer. And when you go to first put them on, they're really tight and stiff. Same thing with a new pair of shoes. When they just come off the manufacturing line, they're tight and stiff. They've never been used. They've never been worn. And so you need to break them in a little bit, but you're breaking them in just to loosen up that tightness in the actual material. But those shoes should be comfortable when you first put them on. They shouldn't be creating pain or problem anywhere. But you, you do need to break them in to loosen up those parts. And when you break them in, I recommend starting off by breaking them in by walking in them, not running in them, and going on a normal length walk for you. So an example would be, actually, the time of recording this, I just started breaking in a new pair of shoes for myself. I did it on the treadmill because I like to break my shoes in on the treadmill because if they do for some reason start hurting, A, the bottoms aren't dirty. So if the shoe company has an issue with that, I still can return them because I'm not going to wear them again if I'm starting to break them in and they don't feel good. I'm going to return them because there's always variations even if you buy the exact same pair of shoe as you always do. they There can be some variation. So I wear them on the treadmill so I can change them out if there's a problem and I can control how far or how long I'm going for. So my normal walk is two and a quarter miles. It takes me 45 minutes to do that outside. So I have a cap. I'm not going more than 45 minutes and I'm not going more than two and a quarter miles. Now you might say, well, Dr. Allie, my normal walk is five miles. That's too long. So 
I, I use the normal walk distance and I use that in quotes if you're listening to this. I use that as a gauge because if you don't normally go for a walk, then you have no idea what your normal walk distance is. And also don't go beyond like two and a half miles. So really starting off breaking in a shoe, no more than two and a half miles. But if you don't walk regularly and you're just running, start off at one mile. Just start off at one mile because you do use your muscles differently when you walk versus when you run. So that plays a factor. But this person went out for a 13.1 mile run in brand new shoes and she had to change them out at four miles. So it's not that her shoes were the problem. It's that she did too many miles in the brand new shoes. Her muscles have to adjust. You know, the arch is a... um molded to your foot, but that takes time. So a brand new arch in a shoe is not going to be molded to your foot. So that's going to adjust. So then it's going to cause the arch cramping or pain like this person had. And then she's going to run differently. Her shoe is built up more than what her old shoe is. So she has to adjust how she's running. Even if it's the exact same shoe, because it's a brand new pair, there's no wear and tear on the bottom of it. So automatically because of that, her foot's going to hit differently on the ground. So then that can cause some knee pain. So how could she have improved this? Well, the next time she goes to break in shoes, she should run for just one or two miles if she's going to do that and then change into her old shoes for the rest of it, or just wear the shoes for a one to two mile run or walk. My, my personal preference is a walk, but you can do it in a short distance run and do that over a couple of weeks. And so what you can do is you run a little bit more in the pair of shoes before you switch them out. That's one of the beauties of doing it on a treadmill. Now, not everybody likes running on a treadmill and not everybody has access to a treadmill. And some people just like running outdoors. I totally get it. But if you want the shoes to feel comfortable, you do have to change them out before you hit that longer distance. So start off with a mile to two miles, then do that again the next time, as long as it felt okay. If it didn't feel okay, switch back to the old shoes. And then you have to start anew the following week. But if it did feel okay, the following week, you run a little bit more, maybe half a mile to a mile longer in those new shoes before you switch them out. Again, that's why I like doing it on a treadmill because then you don't have to work your way back home. You just hop off the treadmill, change out your shoes before you keep going. Or you could split your distance. If it's a really long distance, let's say you are doing the 13 miles, do two miles in the morning and 11 miles later in the day and just wear the new shoes on the two mile run. There are multiple options, but you do have to change them out sooner. You can't wear them for the full length of time because that is the problem because your shoes are not molded to your feet because they're brand new. The cushioning is not worn down, so you're hitting the ground different, and your muscles are reacting. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Thank you, as always, for listening. You can always find me on Instagram, RunDisneyDPT. I'm the Run Disney Doctor of Physical Therapy, helping Run Disney runners who are injury prone or struggling with injury as they're training for a race cross the finish line without feeling broken so they can be feel strong and not like they're held together with KT tape. If you have a particular question, you can send me a DM over on Instagram or email me directly, amarty at drallypt.com. That's all for now. Talk to you soon.